Let's get salty! Hey everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video, and we're going to continue our series. You guys seem to enjoy the last one, so let's keep going on figuring out what the most broken minion in Hearthstone history is. And if you didn't check out the first episode, we took a look at the most broken one drops in the prior episode, and we're going to go all the way up to 10 drops and then 10 plus. So it will be a 10 plus episode, and then we'll put everything together and determine what the most broken minion in Hearthstone history is. We'll probably have like a community poll aspect to the final part. But yeah, we're gonna take a look at two drops today. The history the history of Hearthstone, all of the most busted two cost minions. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at what the most 10 most broken two drops are in the Hearthstone history, at least according to me. And again, the fun part is you guys can take part in the comments below. And believe me, I'm factoring in that stuff for future videos like North Shark Cleric wasn't on my list. Uh, it's a pretty busted card. You could definitely argue for that one. So. Let's take a look at the most busted two drops. So starting off at number 10, we're gonna go with the Grand Tournament card. That's right, the Grand Tournament is actually featured on this list with Totem Golem. It's a two mana, three, four Shaman minion. It's a totem, overload one, and well, it's overstatted for the cost, but you overload for one, but it's got the totem synergy. It was really good with Tunnel Trog. And even without Tunnel Trog, it saw plenty of play in like even Shaman, Totem Shamans, just a really good two drop. It's hard to remove. You can buff it with a Totemic Might or Surge. And well, it, it it's just stats. It's raw stats. It's not sexy in any other way. But yeah, when you make a two mana three, four, that's synergistic with a lot of other cards and only has a downside of overload one, turns out, the card's pretty good, and that's why it's number 10 on the list. At number nine, we're gonna go into the classic, the original OG expansion classic with Knife Juggler, the two mana three, two minion. It was nerfed to a two, two, recently reverted back to three, two. After you summon a minion, deal one damage to a random enemy. And while well, this card was just a staple in like every aggro deck, a ton of mid range decks throughout its entire run until it was nerfed. And even now to this very day, still sees play in like Call to Arms Paladin, even Paladin, other like mid range decks. It still sees some play in 2021 with everything that's gone on and with the historic you know nature of this card how much it pissed rain at off throughout the history of hearthstone i gotta put it on the list at number nine knife juggler definitely one of those very triggering cards when the juggles just don't go your way and number eight i'm gonna go with a hunter card phase stalker the two minute two three beast and after your hero power effectively inspire you draw a secret effectively from your deck but you cast a secret from your deck you basically get a free secret from your deck with that hero power. When you have cards like Tour Guide or just like even Hunter and Wild with Gen Grey Main, this card has just been a staple in Hunter ever since it's been introduced. Still sees a ton of relevant play in Wild, although Hunter's not the best class out there. Uh, Face Stalker definitely really helps even Hunter be a competitive deck. And while its entire run in standard, it was like in Highlander Hunter, Secret Hunter, just whatever Hunter deck you ran, because it's a beast, you can tutor it, you can buff it. It was just incredibly good, very strong to this very day. And it uh, turns out cheating secrets out is pretty strong. We might see that a little bit later on the list as well. At number seven, we have yet another card from Classic appearing on here, but this card has been like the utility card, just a super solid card throughout the history of Hearthstone. And that's the legendary minion, Blood Mage Thalnos. It's a two mana one one, has spell damage plus one and death rattle draw a card. And it just does so much for just a two mana one one. It does so much, it draws you card. The spell damage synergy can be extremely relevant, whether you're a shaman, a mage, what, I mean, we've seen it like, countless decks it helps you cycle it just does everything you want a card to do for relatively cheap it's still in the core set to this day it still sees some play it's even seen play right now in like the whole quest line warlock to help cycle and blood mage has just been a staple in i don't know how many decks like you can go countless and countless decks where blood mage thalnos has been in it's never like why the deck is great it's never the most powerful card in the deck but it's just there it's trusty it's useful it's just an awesome card and well i gotta put on the list it's just such a useful all it's just such a great catch-all card it just does so much i'm gushing over blood mage because it's one of my favorite cards of all time at number six we have a warlock card expired merchant two mana two one 
and it'll uh, have the battle cry of guard your highest cost card and then the death rally add two copies to your hand and basically this card will always draw you three cards when you have like the hand of Gul'dan in hand um you can also play it for like greed options with like a Nazoth or a Blood Reaver Gul'dan in wild and just it, it fuels so many of these aggro decks discard warlock cute lock in wild it was just really good in zoo and standard and one of the main reasons uh, zoo fell off was when expired merchant rotated because he didn't have the great synergy left with the card draw warlock just would never run out of cards with this or you just you know even getting like another fist of jaraxxus or doom guard or just whatever it's just one of those cards that you just don't realize how ridiculous it is until it's not there and we saw that from the standard to wild rotation where warlock just fell off and i really do believe expire merchant was a big part of that and if you look at standard outside of like dark or wild you, you look outside of like dark lair warlock uh, expire merchant can fit into almost every single archetype it's just a very powerful card it's no cobalt librarian I'll tell you that much but it's a very good and probably one of the cards that a lot of people wouldn't think of when thinking of powerful two drops but i certainly think it belongs on the list at number five we have a card that a lot of people are like thinking i would put it number one but it time has not been very kind to prince keleseth the two minute two two legendary if you have no other two cost cards in your deck give all of your uh, cards or minions in your deck plus one plus one and well that was a really powerful effect very early well when the card came into play because the two drops pool wasn't great the two drop pool when prince killaseth was introduced to the game you, you didn't really mind not running another two cost cards because it, it didn't really hurt you that much and you got this buff rogue with like shadow step could really abuse this and it saw a lot of play it saw playing like zulok as well and serenite chain gang really you know benefited from this card but as time has gone on the two drop pool has gotten so much better and there's so many better things to do that When's the last time you really saw Prince Keleseth in Wild? It's pretty rare. It's just not really the card it used to be, but it was incredibly powerful for quite some time. And people load this card. It's one card that I was surprised never saw nerf because it's kind of got that Encanter's Flow feel of you play it, you win the game, and that's just not that fun, more of a high roll. But yeah, overall, Keleseth has fallen off a lot, but its power days were so good for so long and just you know it leaves that it left that imprint in so many people's mind that i gotta put it at least at the top five it, it, it's gotta be there for me at number four we're gonna go with the last classic minion there was quite a few classic cards on this list but she definitely belongs on here and that's the mage minion sorcerer's apprentice two minute three two your spells cost one less or well basically zero these days and she has just been a uh, part of some of those broken decks in hearthstone history mostly in wild uh she was really prevalent in like cyclone mage most recently in standard until she was ousted from the core set and all of that but uh you know quest mage and wild exodia mages but she just could be a good tempo card she was like a tempo mage card just play mana worm into apprentice some cheap spells i was really good too she was this extremely versatile card honestly one of the most problematic cards in hearthstone i've i've fought so many times for her to get nerfed where your spells cost one less but not zero they've never made that change she is still the same way she is in wild and well with the apm mages the mazaki mages and all that she is still a powerhouse and well she's number four on the list for a good reason but there's three cards i put above her so there's some pretty crazy stuff and at number three although it doesn't feel as game breaking as sorcerer's apprentice i just feel this card overall has been more impactful, more powerful, and that's Mad Scientist. And number three, the two mana two two neutral minion, Death Rattle, cast a secret from your deck. You basically get a free secret out of this. And how many decks has a Mad Scientist been in throughout the history of Hearthstone? It's a neutral minion. Hunter's been able to abuse it. Mage, you could do it in Paladin. You could do it in Rogue. It doesn't really, you know, not really worth it so much. But just getting that ice block out, getting that freezing trap out, that explosive trap, the explosive runes. This card has been basically a mage card forever. It's been in like every mage deck, period, pretty much, that ever wants to run a secret because why not? Uh, you know, I was thinking about art cards like uh, Archaeologist and Flak Mage, which are very good honorable mentions, but for me, Mad Scientist has just stood the test of time. This card has been just so good in so many different archetypes and like Prentice is good in like tempo and combo. Well, Scientist can be good in those decks too. It could be good in control. It could be good in aggro. It could be good in pretty much everything. As, of course, as long as around secrets. But overall, I got to put Mad Scientist above Apprentice. This, this was tough. This top five was really tough. And the final two, ugh, really tough as well. I really fought to which ones are one or two. But, well, let's get into it. What is number two? 
it's dark glare dark glare the warlock minion i i'm not going to put this on the three drop list by the way because it's been a two drop way way longer than a three drop I'm, i don't want to have the same minion on the same list whatever um but dark glare has just been like a tear in wild since like not not since its inception to be fair i came out in ashes of outland but when we got raised dead and flesh giant in uh skull Immense, this card has forever broken wild and uh it's still to this day maybe uh maybe the nerfs will be announced and something will finally happen but yeah dark glare is just an incredibly powerful warlock card it's seeing play now in standard in the whole quest line warlock as well arguably one of the best decks if not the best deck in standard and dark glare just gives you infinite mana cheat it's just a ridiculous card i wanted it changed for a long time i wish it was an infinite mana generation but I can't deny its strength. It is just such a ridiculously good card, but not number one, because it's only in Warlock, it's only in certain archetypes, and it's mostly dominated wild, whereas standard, it's just been a good card in standard. So before we get to number one, here's a few honorable mentions, just in case you thought I forgot something, or there's probably stuff I forgot or didn't think was as good enough to even mention, but honorable mention, a recent one is Far Watch Post. Even at a 2-3, it's pretty good. And at a 2-4, it was pretty busted. Ship's Cannon, great in pirate decks, just an all around solid two drop. We got Wild Power Immenser, or just another really flexible, classic card one of my favorites love the design on it iron beak owl was incredible at two mana it was like an auto include silence option and eventually got nerfed to three where it's not quite so great efficient octobot for rogue just mana cheap really cheap it's ridiculous and also mentioned dirty rat just the, like the ultimate combo hate card just really solid so what's number one if it wasn't dark lair I gotta go with Zephyrus the Great. Zephyrus the Great, two mana, three, two. Basically, your deck contains no duplicates. Wish for the perfect card. You get a Tyrion, you get a Twisting Nether, you get a Bloodlust, a Fireball for a lethal. This card just gave you whatever you needed. Value, lethal, just board presence, a Temple Enforcer in the clutch. You know, you love that Temple Enforcer when you need literally anything else. Yeah, sometimes they'll screw up and not give you what you want, but overall, this card was so insane that you would just throw it into non-duplicate decks. Do just decks that drew a lot because the Zephyrus impact was so great. That the fact that you could play a Highlander deck just for Zeph. No other Highlander card. You ran it. You played just no duplicates just for Zephyrus, which is a common thing in standard because this card was so good. And like classes like, let's say, Priest with Raised Dead that could get more of them or Rogue, which can shadow step them. It's just such a good, it's such a good card. It is so broken. It's not quite that prevalent and wild to be honest right now. Reno decks are in a rough spot because of Dark Glare and the other stuff going on. But overall, I, I just can't justify putting like the most powerful all around neutral card to drop ever at number one. It's gotta be my number one. But hey, let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with any of these picks. What did I miss? What should be on here? Always fun debate to have and make sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed the content. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.